A friend of mine reached out to me saying, We need to solve space exploration. Plus, Cross Torio 2, one of Factorio's longest mods. I agreed and we booted up, but there's a problem. Factorio's biggest update ever, Space Age, will be releasing soon. It could drop a year from now or tomorrow, and when it does, everybody, including me, will be playing it. Will we complete our 200 to 1000 hour Factorio mod, or will our save file be abandoned and forgotten? Welcome to a race against time and space. The beginning of a Factorio run is one of the many highlights in my opinion. You land on a planet with a configuration of resources, flying through possibilities in your head, trying to remember the keybinds. It's a mix of excitement, focus, and most of all, calmness. Crastorio 2 starts with debris from a large rocket you crashed, but your goals are otherwise similar to vanilla. Create a small number of basic resources, place them in small simple arrangements, and before you can do anything, you need to do some mining. By hand. The game pivots toward automation fairly quickly, giving you tools that will do this work for you, but until then you're stuck mining, handcrafting, and manually feeding coal into machines yourself. It's like the game is reminding you of what a 300 hour gaming experience used to look like. If you're not familiar, the soundtrack we're listening to is from RuneScape, one of the first games that tried to get you to play the game quite literally forever. It's one of the most brutally grindy games ever made, and it's essentially like being stuck in this first manual phase of Factorio. I was one of the people who played it when it first came out at the library, one of the few sources of reliable internet at the time. Back then, RuneScape hit on a crazy number of points. An internet-based, free, real-time, 3D, in-browser game supporting thousands of players concurrently on the same server with 26 skills to master, free trade, PvP, hundreds of quests, and a killer soundtrack with hundreds of songs was unheard of. Having just one of those traits would make a game state-of-the-art at the time, let alone all 11. If you tried playing either version of the game today, you would likely find the game unresponsive, repetitive, bloated, outdated, requiring a masochistically large amount of your time to do anything with graphics that might be charming but certainly aren't winning any awards. Despite this, the game has a growing and thriving community featuring a large number of incredibly popular content creators 22 years later and it's far from a dead game. Some people argue this is due simply to nostalgia. Kids who had a similar library experience to me were hopelessly infected with the internet's equivalent of crack and it doesn't matter how bad the game is. Some people argue that the game is actually a one-of-a-kind masterpiece and is deserving of the ever-growing popularity. I fall somewhere in the middle, but there's one thing the game has taught me. A soundtrack is critical to a game's success. Every time I hear one of these tracks, I'm transported so viscerally to the feeling of playing the game for the first time. Sir, this is a Factorio video. Can you kindly shut the fuck up about RuneScape? Yeah, 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 sorry. I just wanted to set the stage for my background music selection. The 30 or so songs I actively enjoy from the game represent less than 10% of the game's 500 plus tracks, but I think they are some of the best in gaming, period. They fit this excited, chill, grindy aesthetic very well, and there are certainly a lot of them. This is not to belittle the Factorio soundtrack, I love it dearly. It especially does a great job of encapsulating this feeling of progression, it makes me feel patient, inventive, and similarly chill. I just have one problem. The first thing you hear is this extremely dissonant, unnerving, anxiety-provoking jingle. If the music is on, it's the first thing you hear every time you start up the game. On my first playthrough of the game, this matched my true feelings a little better. There was certainly more adrenaline and energy the first time I got into a game with several of my friends who also had no idea what they were doing. But at this point, I've started around 30 games and the anxiety has long since left my experience of the early game. I don't want Factorio to change its soundtrack, I love it, and in-game it does its job very well. Maybe just change the startup jingle? You may disagree, this isn't a hill I plan to die on, just a personal thought, and uh, I could really acquiesce to anyone's opinion. Oh yeah, the game. Right. The main mod packs in play here are Crastorio 2, the proverbial baby's first mod that acts similarly to an 80-ish hour Factorio Plus experience. 
and the beloved space exploration a challenging 200 to 500 hour experience focusing on interplanetary logistical problems featuring new resources, weapons, science, and space stuff. In recent years, the modding community of Factorio has developed compatibility mods to allow both overhaul mods in a single playthrough. My goal is to get to the end. Well, one of them at least. I've played 90% through Crastorio 2 with two of my other friends and had a great time with it while also getting to the rocket slash satellite portion of the Space Exploration 2 mod in two different group playthroughs. I've also seen complete playthroughs of both mods, so I know Space Exploration has an ending and then a secret ending, and I've read that K2 plus SE, which is shorthand for Crastorio 2 plus Space Exploration together, has a secret ending, and it might be different from SE's only ending, I don't know. And I'm not looking to spoil it for myself either. I'm going to be following some loose rules around these types of things. If we get hard stuck, then look up the most basic hint we can find. Reading generally about the mods is okay, but actively looking up blueprints or walkthroughs is not. Hopefully these make sense. Haha. Forgot to put coal in my bot. Oh yeah, I said we. This is my teammate, Sir Wazzle. He has the same amount of experience with both mods, so he doesn't have unfair game knowledge or experience in either mod. Oh god, they're so slow. But he will speed up no. certain sections of the game considerably, especially the early game. I've left in a few of his words of wisdom, but once I figured out how to use OBS to cite it, it was easier to just roll with the game sounds, so enjoy him while he lasts. I'll blitz through a list of things we've completed so far. Set up burner miners on coal and a conga line for easy coal grabbing. Miners on iron and copper that feed directly into furnaces. Stone miners pointing to a wooden chest. Alrighty, what can we do? We can now make burner assemblers. Clearing stones and trees and a lot of crafting things like burner miners and some early science. This mod also allows you to place stone as a walking path, so I went crazy in a splooge, the first of many. With the newly researched burner assemblers, I try my hand at some early belt automation. Hold up, burner assembler? What? Yeah, there's an extended burner phase before electricity where you feed coal directly into machines instead. At the beginning, it seems convenient to not need to set up power, but it effectively lengthens the game with an entire extra shit tier of everything. You've probably also noticed that we have flying robots already. This is another mod where you start with modular armor and, you guessed it, a burner generator to power them. They help out, but are well balanced because they are slow. Really slow. Next on the list is to actually automate coal, and I'm going to be doing that without the help of the robots just because they are so slow. I've found that their best use right now is actually clearing trees and rocks and deconstructing. Should call them demolition bots, honestly. Glad I set these belts up. Burner miners need coal to run, so I'm feeding the same coal that they mined back into them using burner inserters. All this coal is disgusting. Jesus, I hope there aren't biters nearby. Also, look at how slow these bots are when they're unpowered. It's pathetic. All right, turn this one belt into two, and that's one belt of coal. Dr. Wazel has also been handling the early research in his hidden lab. You'll occasionally see our improvements in the bottom left corner. All right, this is the last one, and then we have power. Thank God. You can actually use these funny-looking burner generators. They're not as good as steam, but they'll do for now. I'm going to be getting the... You don't need to make a lot of those because I'm about to make steam. Never mind. Okay. I will need one. Then it will always be going. While less efficient, having one of these up can be nice to prevent brownouts from happening because a burner inserter will work regardless of if there is electricity, so we like to have these up as backups. Sounds good. You probably can't feel it yet the slow slurping lips of the spaghetti monster. On my first playthrough, it was all that I knew. Slam some belts together, and if the resources are correct, then the thing will make the thing. Everything else be damned. 
As he became more experienced, I strayed further and further from the call of the pasta. Oh, look at that. Look at that lineup. I was terrified of it. Everything had to go on a main belt. I needed to have a gap wide enough for four iron belts before we could even satisfy one. If we didn't do it this way, I knew where we were headed. Back to the zero throughput tangled hell you started with. I was a control freak. Every time a teammate would build an assembler on the belt or, God forbid, try to turn the damn thing, I would scold them and delete everything they made. You don't understand how bad things can get. You want a factory making three green circuits per minute? You want 80% of your time to be following a single thread of iron? You don't know what I've seen, boy. Main belt after main belt, I would complete runs, but I could never forget my encounters with the spaghetti. It would taunt me. You know you want to build an assembler directly on the main belt. Wouldn't it be nice to just take a few copper wire off your circuit belt? Come on. It was like this until I saw the light. Clarity finally asserting itself where there had once been darkness. My fear of spaghetti had made me the monster. Spaghetti was just like a lion or a tree. It was nature. It was a pattern. It couldn't hurt me. And from that day on, I righteously wielded the spaghetti saber, welcomed all suboptimal builds into my heart. The path forward was exposed. Spaghetti made the factory grow faster than anything else, and at the end of the day, this is all that matters. And this will be serving us well. I've read many forums on general ideas in this mod pack, and many recommend just making spaghetti until you can get to space. My newfound tolerance for kludges and quickly made builds is actually a commodity. Also, here we can see a rare instance of construction bots being useful for their namesake. Constructing a blueprint for our early iron smelting. Ugh, come on, just finish the automation so I can be done. Thank fucking god. Okay, this ratioed. Uh, you got two machines too many, I think. Wow, I was that close? I wasn't even trying. Uh, if you use the rate calculator, it's, you need 15, 15 iron ore. There we go. That's, that's correct ratio. Loaders are another thing native to these mods. They act essentially as super powered inserters, but are balanced in this case because they are extremely expensive, requiring 50 green circuits. So we won't be making them anytime soon. These miners are on the boundary of an iron and coal patch, which I thought would be beneficial because I could just mine both things that I need right here, but there is a golden rule in Factorio stating that if there is spaghetti, there will be complications and backups, and we can already start to kind of see what's happening, and I'll be kicking myself later for this. <laughs> Let there be stone brick path. Oh. Oh. A fast. Meanwhile, Sir Waz set up some early power and we'll be using this for quite a while. And so the main belt begins. In the long term, we planned on using trains for most things, but until we get them, we'll have a main belt. They ate real food or make some tots. Real food. But then I gotta like think about cooking and stuff. It's not that hard. You could just throw a burger on the fryer, you know, it should be done in five minutes or so. I mean, a burger is easy. I just need to not be playing Factorio to make it. That's the problem. Mm, I see. Well, couldn't you just go in, make it real quick, come out? It shouldn't take that long, right? Well, I mean, it'll take me like 15 minutes. But that's 15 minutes I'm not playing Factorio. Modern day problems. Over here, I'm basically rebuilding the belt kludge I made up at the top. The recipe being gears, engine units, and iron, which is quite a bit more tedious than in vanilla. Meanwhile, Mr. Wazinator has blueprinted the iron smelting and repurposed it for copper. Thankfully, the proportions are the same, so it can be a literal one-to-one -one copy of the iron. Crestorio 2 does a weird thing where smelting isn't just one ore equals one iron plate. It's actually 20 iron ore equals 15 iron plate, which happens all in one recipe, so you get these sort of bursts of iron instead of the continuous flow you might be used to. Also, electric miners are better than burner miners in every way, so it's time to start the great replacement.
It's hard to put into words, and because he's going to be off-screen 90% of the time, it might feel like he's not even there, but Sir Wazzle is the greatest asset I will have in this run. It's not surprising he's literally another player, but his tireless contributions deserve to be underlined and highlighted. In addition to being just as knowledgeable, if not more so, than I am, his strengths complement mine very well. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I get an insane idea, start building as fast as I can, and when I'm done, look back and think, boy, that doesn't make any sense at all. Well, Wazzy Wazborn is the antidote to my insanity. He actually measures before he cuts and on many occasions has found bugs in my builds. I wouldn't say either of us have a particular weakness in the sense that we could both finish this mod alone, eventually, but I believe my particular strengths lie in setting up production, managing throughput, God damn, those loaders are expensive. Ugh. And combinator logic. Washington, on the other hand, is what I consider a train god, one who can whisper directly into the ear of rail signals as well as minister of defense and democratic expansion of the base and rate calculating. Also, I accidentally turned off my bot network and I didn't figure it out for another hour, so, uh, yeah. Waz tries to fix it for a little bit. Do you have any power left in your thing? Yes. Oh, you can just pick them up and see if that does it. It didn't, but I appreciate the hustle. And we're back to this damn thing. God, I must have come back here like 15 times. It was such a waste. Don't ever do sushi in this mod. Oh, uh, did you click the toggle personal rubble port, Alt-R? Alt-R happened to be the recording button for me, so yes, I indeed pressed it. Uh, score one for the Wazinator. You might be thinking, wait, isn't this a race? Why are we going so slow? Indeed, it is a race, but keep in mind that this is a marathon, not a sprint. If we accomplish what we set out to do, we'll be here for at least 200 hours, and we need to pace ourselves. Additionally, Reddit threads have informed me that the Crash Torio 2 part of this mod effectively extends the early game, making it more complicated and taking longer to actually launch a rocket, but rewards you with tools that speed up later parts of the game. Because of our lack of in a space experience, I think this will heavily play into our benefit. We have no problems launching a rocket, done it dozens of times. But once we're actually in space, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Speaking of the early game, you might be wondering exactly how this mod is organized. Most people mention the early game as being everything up until the rocket is launched. This means that a full vanilla playthrough plus a bunch of extra intermediate manufacturing is required, just to get to the mid-game. They then mention that the mid-game is handling interplanetary logistics in very large and varied extended tech tree, followed by the end game consisting of deep space travel. I don't want to, like, be shitting my... <clears throat> so anyway, I think it's good to review the early game for any people less familiar with the game, as well as establish a basis for our playstyle. I only have just over 700 hours in the game, which... Like pizza. If I have, like, well, I make one of my homemade pizzas fresh, I could just eat that entire thing. Puts me in the bottom 1% of players. That's a joke, but there's some truth to it. You may find things I build to be suboptimal or not balanced, and although I can't hear your screaming at your monitor, believe me, I get it. There is a ton to get done, and even familiar things are more complicated than they look, so for this first main belt, I have opted to just use four assemblers for everything I make. It isn't perfectly ratioed, it isn't pretty, and nobody's winning awards. But the small amount of wisdom I have been able to slurp up until this point has taught me that if it works, it works. All of the calories my brain saves on not calculating perfect ratios for belts and inserters and all this early junk can be used for solving every other problem these mods are going to throw at us. Besides, we really don't need ratios yet. All right, well, I'm gonna make uh, electric mining drills. These assemblers are going to sit idle for a long time, no matter how well I ratio them. Also, assemblers are cheap, belts are cheap, inserters are cheap, Making too many of assemblers is the least of my concerns right now. Also, everything that is essentially an upgrade of something before it takes the previous item as an input for its recipe. 
For example, inserters require burner inserters, so this might be the first time you actually see an assembler with the burner inserter icon on it. They also require one of the new intermediate items, which is the small electric engine, and you can see where making anything in this mod starts to kind of become a pain when you compare it to vanilla. Similarly, assembler ones take burner assemblers to make, and this is about the time where the burner phase goes from, hmm, that was interesting, to god damn it. Yeah, how does it, how does it make you feel spiritually? Damn it. Well, at least we finally have inserters. Celine Dion? Oh yeah, there's also some other creatures that somehow find their way into our Discord from time to time. I hope they have fun getting gaslit to Helen back. Yes. See, he consented. Some of us have been clipping and dunking on each other through video for years now, and we consider it normal. I even have another channel filled with videos like this, and I honestly hope that nobody ever finds it. Despite all the automation that you see, I still need to come back here and fill these with coal from time to time because they are not perfectly getting fed. And this damn thing again. You guessed it, it clogged. If there's one thing I could change, it would be to mine these two resources separately and not deal with this as long as I did. Ugh, getting rid of these burner miners feels so good. The construction bots are so slow to pick these up because first they have to grab all the coal out of it and put it in my inventory and it ends up being faster to just grab them myself, so yeah, another L for them. I do like watching construction bots fly around though, they look so cool. That's usually, that's kind of abnormal. Uh, rude. <sighs> yeah, I end up working on this thing so long, the day-night cycle laps me, ugh, god. Yeah, brother! A blended green poblano pepper soup. We started a new Factorio game. Oh, doing... you did? Oh, it's, it's host. It's up. So hop in. Oh yeah. Hey. <laughs> Surprise! So we actually do end up having a third member, but he doesn't really do anything. Well, he does, but we'll get to that. Yeah, I just ripped it up and uh, tried to do priority inputs for the coal. I guess that's another thing that will technically be counting against me. We play in a Discord with other people, and while we're playing, I end up idling a bit just to focus on talking to my friends. Milk. M-E-L-K. Milk. Milk. It's you not an, milk. You put an H after the L. Grabay. What the fuck is this? You guys already did all this in like three hours? What the fuck? I'm like, I'm like, I like finally have a good day and I like heat up my food with eggs on it. I'm like excited to have eggs and cheese. I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally a human Fuck again. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in a hall of a crowded hall of people. He just walks by the vending machine. Ah, oh, thanks. You have a good day too. And everybody just looks at him like, what the fuck? Turns to the vending machine. Ah, oh, you too. <laughs> They're making fun of me for talking to vending machines. Also, this is Trooper's lone contribution, teaching us how to wave dash. I'll make a nuclear plant. Okay, come back in a few hundred hours. <laughs> Literally. Overall, I honestly see the social dynamics of our Discord as a strength. I think I possess the ability to grind something out for 200 hours alone in a closet with the door shut, but I actually kind of like it when people can just jump. Mm, me want to stomp around in mech. Bin and start talking about poblano pepper soup or whatever the fuck Trooper was making. It's a sanity buff. Also, Trooper just left to go play Mech Warrior, so some total of his contributions are wave dashing, shooting me, and thinking about a nuclear power plant. He was about as helpful as the LaCroix is flavored. So yeah, if you think Trooper's contributions are cheating, your honor, I'd like to rest my case. The main belt is coming along nicely now, just making another new intermediary part, the automation cores. Thematically, I don't really understand what it is they're going for, like, yeah, this assembler used to be an eye clinic, but then we shoved an automation core into it, now it can assemble things. Again, the goal here is as sophisticated as make some amount of a thing and send it where it needs to go. A shout out to Bob's inserters for allowing ultra compact spaghetti. It ends up being bad for UPS or updates per second or game performance or lag or whatever you want to call it, but we're a long way away from needing to worry about that. 
What the mod does is allow freedom for inserters to grab and put items to and from anywhere in a radius around them and even to select which side of the belt an item should be placed on. This allows you to solve problems that in vanilla generally require tons of belt and splitter shenanigans. And bots still suck. Maybe it would have been a joke. Rude. Wait, it is. Is it a joke? Bro. No. Anyway, the first upgrade these bots get are with Chemical Science, which are actually chemical research cards, thanks to Crastorio 2. These are a long ways out, but even longer out are actual bot upgrades. Things like passive provider chests and requester chests are now locked behind launching a rocket, so getting robots to do all this dirty work for us is not an option. I'm honestly just dreaming about a robot mall that trivializes all of these intermediate parts. Even when we get them though, a new mechanic called robot attrition will be another hurdle to jump over. Attrition causes robots to have a small chance of crashing and doing a small amount of damage to whatever they land on whenever there are 50 or more in a robot network. This sounds bad, but honestly is more of a small nuisance because you can just automate more flying robot production and they should just replace their fallen comrades. I'm not too worried about it. We're this far in and we finally just have assembler ones. A little depressing. Yeah, the average conversation in our Discord is talking about anime and cat boys and... Didn't they just like pulled the, the Homer Simpson into the bush? <laughs> Jeff, just yeah, like, like, they're like, I have a job and you're like, where? And they're like, goodbye. We only have a limited number of cliff explosives, so I'm trying to use them only when necessary. Like in vanilla, they're locked behind a few things we don't have yet, so I'm hoping to not run into some giga cliff. Here's where the price of spaghetti starts to become apparent. It looks like I can just squeeze in some more assemblers for god knows what, but I totally lizard brain thinking about where all the inputs and outputs are going to go. Just because spaghetti is tolerable doesn't mean it should always be used. Nonetheless, here are burner miners being made because like everything else, they are necessary for their upgrade electric miners. Wait, didn't, didn't we? <laughs> My mom is morbidly obese. Sugar. And I don't like you. <laughs> you will never have the context for that conversation. But, but wait, wait, wait. Didn't we already... All right, oh, I'm going to make uh, electric mining drills. Damn it. That's another thing you need to factor into team playthroughs. Communication. Well, the problem in this case was actually just my bad memory, but I could have asked before setting up electric mining drills myself. Things like this actually pop up quite often. Sometimes you didn't mention you were making something or you're building right where somebody else planned to build. All it takes is to ask the question, honestly, but this is not an area where the average Factorio player excels. But I'm already this far in, so might as well finish the job. Over in Wazzle World, he has set up iron mining, which is starting to be in demand. K2 plus SE bases aren't quite as iron hungry as in vanilla, but it is still the most used resource. I get so excited that I just start throwing power poles at it until it works. When you zoom out, things actually look kind of organized. On the point of communication, though, it's important to remember that it isn't a blame game. There aren't necessarily winners and losers of an argument, just a factory that needs to grow. Back in the day, we would almost have court battles spanning hours talking about how to build things. The result of them? Basically nothing. I didn't actually get any benefit out of explaining how bad a certain part of the factory was because it didn't produce a full belt of what it was making, or because it wasn't sufficiently expandable. You're Jenkins. Who invited this guy? Fuck, get out of here, get out of here. <laughs> Not only was it a waste of time, it was also very demotivating to others to build thing, and then just to have someone point out all the negatives. So yeah, I advise not to do that. Just let other people build things. Especially in the early game, you'll get tools to make pretty much everything anyone wants to make right now obsolete. I actually used to loathe the part where you had to deconstruct things and rebuild. It was a mix of not understanding how easy bots and the deconstruction planner are and that new builds are easier to make because of your new tools. Nowadays, I deconstruct a will. Everything can be rebuilt and rebuilt better. So overall, my philosophy is to just give everyone the freedom to make things how they want. 
and to consider no parts of the factory sacred. I hope these tenants will serve me well in my journey to space. Oh yeah, our Discord names are in the top left. My name is Gloobort, but as a programming function with the smirk face and Sir Wazzle's second pseudonym is a good twink. He's not actually a twink, don't get any ideas, I just suggested that he looked like a twink once. I'm, I'm also not a twink, nobody's a twink, okay, it's just his name. But yeah, you get a good twink, glue abort the function, the needful, a guy with rabbit in his name and trooper no hacks. Oh, and bulletproof ant. Epic blunt rotation, who you pass into. Oddly enough, long-handed inserters are easier to make than fast inserters because they don't require green chips. Because of Bob's inserters, you don't really need them, but they're good for when you're lazy, aka the next 20 hours. Yeah. Oh. And there are electric mining drills that we already have. Remember when I was talking about communicating? Yeah, this is definitely the best way to do it. Yeah. Alright, time to get fancy. We need to make undergrounds and splitters, and we don't have much room to do it. Well, not really. We do have near infinite room. It's basically an unlimited resource, but if it fits in here, it would look kind of good. So yeah, time to turn up the spaghetti to 11. We just happen to have a little bit of room here to make the iron beams that are necessary, and uh, then I struggle quite a bit to actually get them over there. I can't wait until we have trains. And then, and then it'll be will be fully operational. I'm actually genuinely curious about the number of players who would choose to build this way, who end up building this way, and who would never build this way. I definitely fall into the unhinged camp, so shit like this pops up everywhere when I'm building, but I know a lot of you out there have near OCD levels of control when it comes to laying these out. I love that. Thanks. Oh god, if anyone has to change this in the future, it's gonna be basically impossible. Super user-friendly. It is extremely user-friendly. Yeah, sure. The beginning also requires you to run back and forth to manually grab things because we don't have logistic boys to do this for us. We use Far Reach, which is a mod that helps alleviate this problem by giving us the reach of Slenderman. It helps quite a lot with solving one of the less interesting problems in Factorio, which is movement speed. And now we can finally shove our undergrounds into this box. The future is now. Our map generation was actually fairly lucky. We have tons of copper and stone, three different enormous oil patches that are close by rare minerals, and three giant coal patches. When I first looked at this map, I couldn't believe how lucky we were. Little did I realize that 500k iron that was next to us was not nearly big enough to finance our endeavors, and for how much we have explored, there are no more iron mines in sight. There is a mechanic that can help us get a slow, infinite trickle of not only iron, but nine other resources, but I'll talk about that when we get to it. Even that wouldn't be enough, though, so I was starting to worry about our long-term prospects for iron. Compared to what I used to do, there are far less wasted resources, for example, multiple chests filled with gears or bullets or something like that. So 500k might get us farther than it usually would. That being said, all these stupid intermediates are starting to add up. If I can make an iron stick, I should be able to use it as a weapon. Ask me anything. Thankfully, the main belt acts as a limiter on spaghetti. Ensures that everything will work eventually as long as you limit production accordingly. I should probably properly explain what a main belt is. It's just a way of organizing resources. Usually, iron gets smelted in one spot and then put onto a belt perpendicular to manufacturing. The same happens for copper and other resources necessary for ingredients like coal and stone. This ensures that the flow of a given resource never hits a wall or ends, and the theoretical expansion is infinite as long as you have more space in the direction of the main belt. I highly recommend it as a simple way to get out of the spaghetti phase of this game if you are new. We've actually been running on this tiny row of burner miners this entire time, which has been leading to a few brownouts. Uh, this update is long overdue. 
Long term, I want this entire planet to run on solar panels and accumulators and more generally be able to handle itself, uh, because if I'm out on Pluto setting up a glorp or mine, then it'll be a long time to come back and fix anything, and I don't want to be bothered with that. I might sound a little deflated, and that's because I am, but I honestly can't wait until space. I've never experienced it, and I'm excited to see if I can solve the Combinator problems I've been promised by Reddit. I used to avoid Combinators like the Flag, but in the past few months I have been using them to set up extensive ungodly contraptions that trade 90% efficiency in one department for 10% efficiency in another. As a general rule, you don't need them to play through the game, but there are things like balancing oil production, limiting belts, and sushi science, aka putting all sciences on the same belt, where they are genuinely the best tool in the box. You can do more with technical knowledge, but mostly, it just works. Couldn't have said it better myself. Every time I place something on the ground, I get this small feeling of guilt that I have already made this pattern before and I could have been blueprinting it this whole time. These construction bots are very nice, but they also act as a constant reminder of your slow mortal inefficiency. But there we have it, a real coal mine. And the power is working again. Our research has so far been these seven labs. It might sound like a tiny amount, but there's so much extra time between things in K2SE that they get the job done and actually leave us with some extra downtime once we complete green science. Adding coal to the main belt always feels kind of weird, feels like it doesn't belong there, like it should just go in furnaces and plastic and stuff like that, but they are actually used in bullets, which I'm currently making, and a few other things. Oh yeah, bullets. Some people suggest playing this mod with biters off because it only affects your starting planet Navis, meaning that future planets you go to will still have biters no matter what you choose. Ignoring defenses would drastically speed up our run and be a huge help with our dwindling iron supply, but it wouldn't feel right. Setting up defenses is, in my opinion, an integral part of the Factorio experience, and it would feel wrong without them. I like the process of setting up walls and the challenge of finding places to put turrets and how to supply them. We're also using a mod that allows turrets to rank up based on how many kills they get, so it shouldn't be too hindered. Space exploration also has a drastically lower amount of biters compared to the normal default settings in vanilla, so I don't see us getting overrun anytime soon. Very cool. In fact, I haven't even seen a single biter yet. I haven't even really been looking yet, but usually they look for you. What we usually end up with is a big ugly belt that goes around the perimeter of our base and feeds the bullets to the turrets. This is a nice easy way to do it, but it also wastes a lot of bullets that are stuck on the belt, and a better way to do it is to use trains in my opinion, so not that they needed it, but add another point to the train column. Also don't touch Sir Waz's iron box. I'm putting back the box for iron for a reason to have a stockpile of iron. Make you removed iron. it like four times now, I keep putting it back. My bad. The vending machine told him to do it. So. You gotta put a sign next to it that says don't remove. <laughs> I think we have enough bricks to pave the world. No. Satellite view's looking pretty good, nowhere near where we would be in vanilla at this time, but we're not in vanilla. One thing I end up doing a lot over this run is building the inserters around the box like this because loaders are extremely expensive. More important communication, as you can see. Just to the east of the main belt, Waz the first of his name has been making tech cards, Crastorio 2's equivalent of science. They are pretty similar to science but have some fundamental differences in the ingredients necessary to make them, as well as certain technologies not actually requiring every previous tech card to research. They're back. Oh god, I don't have any ammo. Don't have any with me right now. Oh god, they're eating the iron mine. The first biter attack is honestly pretty pathetic. They get a few miners, but for this stage in the game, they're not doing too much damage. They do act as a good reminder that we have to build some defenses quickly, though. And that means drop everything you're doing and start making some gun turrets. 
you know the drill. Don't act like this has never happened to you before. You're right in the middle of doing something and then have to run halfway across the map to shoot three biters and pivot immediately to making defenses. Whatever the hell you were doing before is immediately discarded from your brain and you will forever have a half-built something that everyone scratches their head at. Also, you may have noticed that we never automated electric poles. I've handcrafted literally hundreds of these iron poles and they are everywhere. New power poles don't give anything except more space that is not taken up by power poles, so it has never made its way onto the list of priorities. Their aesthetic does fit the mood pretty well, TBH. Just shitty wires everywhere. Yeah. And there we have gun turrets, our sole source of firepower for a long time until we can make plastic and circuits and the other dependencies for laser turrets. Gun turrets do have some advantages compared to laser turrets, there are biters that take more damage from bullets, but overall the conveniences of using generated power as ammunition instead of a bunch of iron and coal that needs to be transported over as well as having a longer range makes laser turrets my go-to for defense if I can make them. Walls are the other half of the defense equation and their recipe is simple enough, just stone bricks. Thank god the mod creators didn't add, like, sand or gravel or rocks or some shit as an intermediate for these. The first boundary I set up is to the east, but in hindsight I should have sealed off the northwest first because there were biters that were, like, spawning or teleporting across the lake there, and we ended up needing to intervene quite a few times. This is the ammo belt I was talking about earlier. Inserters thankfully default to putting only 5 ammo in a turret despite their maximum capacity being 200, so I don't need to do any fancy logic reading how many bullets go into a gun to prevent the many turrets that will end up being fed from sitting on a large amount of ammo and stressing our iron supply even further. These walls are kind of dumb, the factory is going to expand in that direction pretty quickly here anyway, but walls are cheap and sometimes it's more about sending a message. I also end up building this belt like five times, so sometimes it's better to measure first and then cut. We're not really getting attacked from the east, but all these cliffs acting as natural walls is kind of cool. There is one thing that gets made at like minute 30 in most runs and that is green circuits. Three hours in and we are finally going to start making some. The recipe in Crestorio 2 always felt a little weird to me. They use stone tablets and copper wire. I get the copper wire, but I can never get the image of Fred Flintstone holding a stone iPhone out of my head when I see this recipe. I know the circuits are often made out of like silicon which can be made from sand but just like a slab of granite is like can you do that in real life can you make a circuit out of just like a chunk of stone with wires does that work it's blatantly a, a violation of the constitution yeah i wouldn't go that far put them in jail or um, yeah okay let's send them to jail Stone doesn't really get used for much else in the base game, so I'm not complaining. I'm kind of glad that I can use the stone for something. Kind of wish I could have some recipe that, like, smashes a ton of stone into iron. Like, ten stone ore for one iron ore or something like that. Hear me out, it follows the logic of Settlers of Catan when you send in, like, 20 sheep to make a settlement. What are the houses made out of? Sheep. What are the church? Sheep. The bathrooms? Sheep. It's blatantly a, a violation of the constitution. Put them in jail. Okay, okay, fine. I'll go look for more iron. Jesus. Once again, this is like most of the other stuff I put on the belt, and next time I do this, I'm going to focus a lot harder on making blueprints and just slapping those down because I've hand-placed quite a few of these iron poles and it's really unnecessary. 
and we're finally placing down the infrastructure to build the green circuits. Uh, these really are a window into the future for things like fast inserters and assembler twos, so we're going to make a lot of them. Don't get me wrong, our progress has really slowed to a crawl, but I wanted to give the authentic experience of having to slog through the early game. It's not all firing rockets and hanging out with aliens. You need to actually earn your space vehicles as the mod creators intended. Crestorio 2 also implies you're an alien, or like on an alien planet, or something like that. Mostly, you're just not a human. So you could argue that we're already in space, you get the idea. Also, the green circuits I usually end up putting both on the main belt, but also looping back around. I don't know why this is the case. Uh, does anybody else have this experience? Is this weird? I, I don't know. It always feels weird that I do it this way, but it just kind of ends up that way. I mean, do you tax artists on the art they make? Yeah, you're right. This really is art. Anyway, they loop back around over here because this is where I make inserters, and we have to make some fast inserters, which require the green circuits. Nothing was stopping me from making green circuits earlier in the belt, so there might just be like a natural way of making fast inserters where they don't do this. I, I don't know why I'm so self-conscious about this particular spaghetti. God, there's something about these stupid assemblers that are off by one tile. Like, really? Like, this was the way that they were made? There wasn't a way we could line these up in some way? Oh my god, I, I might just drop a nuke on this, honestly. Probably. Considering that rockets that use solid rocket boosters like SLS or any of the other... Bro, did I ask? Really toxic... <clears throat> yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. <clears throat> Give me the trades. I can't make this spaghetti anymore. Just give me the trades. <laughs> all right, all right. It doesn't really matter because these fast inserters are just going to end up in a box and I'm just going to come back and grab them from time to time. It's not that big of a deal. I'm going to get my inhaler. It's fine. Going there being so close to so much cheap manufacturing, it really does help with innovation. <sighs> you're right, you're right. Yes, this is uh, innovation. We get attacked again, which reminds me we could be making better bullet, but in order to do that, we have to first set up some steel. That ought to do it. Steel works similarly to iron but takes an extra step and the mod creators have gone out of their way to make another intermediate needed to turn iron plates into steel plates. Coke. No, not that coke, like coal coke. In order to make it, you need coal and wood, which sounds weird, but Crestoria 2 is like a greenhouse that grows wood just using water as inputs. So yeah, realism. Also, this stupid intersection again. I know I said the ratios really don't matter in the early game, but I royally screwed this one up. In vanilla, there's a 1 to 1 ratio of iron smelters to steel smelters needed to make steel. However, given the big batch smelting, this ratio is way off. I still haven't calculated the correct ratio because the thing still spits out steel and that's all I need, but don't try this at home. Oh, there I go, not blueprinting again. Uh, at some point I'm gonna have to start thinking about how to drive a spaceship and where on a planet to land it, like, I'm not even 100% sure what the right protocol is for that. Land that bitch in the ocean. Uh, I mean, you're the expert. Also, this might make some of you puke. I play on Wi-Fi, and sometimes this happens. Uh, yeah. Wait, why is there a green bar for server not responding? It's like we've successfully downloaded the server not responding. What? Yeah, that's what I thought. Shout out to the Factorio team, though, for making reconnecting so easy and seamless. Alright, the ending here has been... disorganized. 
this is my first time making a video this long and I think next time I'm going to have a lot more footage with a lot more progress covered in the same amount of time. Also, I think I'm going to get rid of the Discord audio. It's kind of fun, but a lot of genuine game audio had to be deleted and it's a lot easier to edit without it. So anyway, this is where we're at. Wazi and I are looking forward to pushing forward in the next one.